In today's video, I'm going to be transforming this synthetic wig that I got from AliExpress. It was like $25, but um, they always have a sale, so I think the lowest I've seen it is $21. The wig itself is really nice, but I just wanted to dye it because I don't have like many coloured wigs and the coloured wigs I have are human hair wigs and I only tend to wear them for like two weeks at a time so this is kind of going to be like my go-to so I'm going to buy a whole bunch of these and just dye them every single colour so that I have coloured wigs and I'm not buying some expensive human hair wig just to wear just to dye and then wear for two weeks so for the specs of this hair it is a 30 inch wig I don't show it in the video but I take it to about a 26 it's got three combs, as most wigs do, and um, so for the closure, it's a bit of a, I don't know what's going on with the closure, but it's, it's a bit funky. So, like, it's pink, first of all, like, my scalp is not pink, so I realised there was, like, padding in the closure, I don't know, just take a listen. So there was, like, some weird rustling noise in it, but that's about how long it looks on me and how thick. What you're going to need is one of these razor blade things and a brush. Here I'm just showing you how the tracks look. So what you'll do is you'll section the hair. I sectioned it into three parts. You are going to need to pin the hair down too because it's impossible to do this without pinning the hair down. So the reason why I wanted to thin the hair out was because when I was trying it on and stuff, it was tangling quite a bit. I know that's, I think it's common with synthetic wigs, but I hate the whole nape tangling. Like it really drives me crazy. So I thought, let me just thin it out. And it worked, like it doesn't tangle much. I mean, I've only worn it for like 20 minutes max, but it's not as bad as before it was thinned out. So on the razor comb, you need to use the side with the smaller gaps, not the other side, because the other side takes off more hair. So essentially the technique for this is brush the hair and then razor blade it. Brush the hair, then razor blade it. You don't want to do it on tangled hair because where you'd have the knots, if you cut that right off, you don't know actually what parts of hair you're cutting. So you could end up with like a choppy result and you don't want that. Also make sure that your razor blade comb is angled just like the way I have it. If you do it as if you're combing your actual hair, you'll cut too much hair off. So that's about how much, I don't know why I showed that for half a second, but that's about how much I got from that one section. At first I was trying to be, like I wasn't trying to take too much off because you can take more off but you can't put hair that you've lost back on. So basically just go light at first. One key thing I'll mention now, I will mention it again, but I'll mention it now just in case someone's skipping or doesn't want to watch the whole thing, is that you don't want to cut at the root. You want to kind of start a few inches down the hair because if you can't gauge how much you're cutting, you'll cut pretty much from the root and you might cut a whole section of hair and that's a huge gap that you've cut. So try and cut from right about where I just did that cut. So I'm on the middle part of the hair, I haven't started cutting it, I'm just getting ready to do so and this is about how much hair I cut from that lower section. So this is where it's important to start cutting lower down the hair because when you get to the top of the hair, if you start cutting closer to the root, you'll have like flyaways like crazy, you'll just have small hair sticking up and then you would have ruined the wig, now you have flyaways, so start cutting right about there. However, if you don't want to attempt this, you can just skip to my dyeing section, which is a little bit more fun. This to do and to watch and to edit was actually really tedious. I preferred the dyeing section. I just don't know why I had so much fun doing that part, but you can skip to that part if you want. So this is a side by side, um, you can see somewhat of a difference because in the right you can see my shirt's logo but I can definitely feel a difference, it's a little bit lighter than it was before. 
and this is all the hair that came out in the end. For the colouring process, I used the RIT dyes. It has to be synthetic, otherwise it won't work. I also used a few capfuls of the black just to tone down the orange colour a little bit. I used about 8 cups of water. You also want to use stainless steel things for this, otherwise it's going to stain like crazy. Use pots and utensils that you don't care for. I got this pot from Walmart for like $6, so I'll just have this pot as my dyeing hair pot. But um, I will add that I recorded me pouring the, the dye into the pot, but for some reason it was nowhere to be found on my camera. And I was really proud of that footage too, because when you pour it in, it looks really cool. So you want to test a piece of the hair just to see if you are happy with the result. I don't really care to be honest, I was just really impatient and was like, I'm just going to dump this in there, like what's the worst that can happen? Here I'm just attempting to protect the lace with Vaseline. So this doesn't work, or maybe it does work, just a tiny, tiny amount, but when I was doing my research on this, I was seeing got to be glued spray, Vaseline and some other things. But I didn't really buy it because if you're going to boil this hair, chances are it's going to boil whatever you've sprayed or whatever you've applied on it. So I was sceptical going in, but I just did it anyway just to see what would happen. But it doesn't work because my lace is orange as hell. So you just dunk the hair in at this point. My advice is like do it as fast as possible, like push the whole thing under at once. Otherwise you'll have like different variations of colour, like you'll see what I'm talking about. But just try and get it in there like ASAP. Tongs are probably your best utensil for this. I, as you can see, I struggled with two different things before I eventually grabbed a pair of tongs. But it's just easier to pick the hair out of the pot and, you know, stir it around ETC. So, like I said, I just let this sit for about 20 minutes. I stirred it around for maybe like five minutes before I eventually let it sit. So, after 20 minutes, this is the colour I got. I actually really like this colour, but that's not the colour I was going for, so I did this again. So, I went to Michael's, picked up another one. What I did is I saved the water from the first round and boiled it, then just added the second bottle to that mixture. Then I added some water to the bottle, shook it up, poured it in there, because don't waste no product. That small fragment of dye probably doesn't even do anything but I feel like you get your money's worth doing extra shit like this. So at this point is when I started incorporating more of the black dye. In the first round I did, I'd only did one capful but of course it disappeared with the other footage but here I show what I do and I'm also going to write it down so if you want to get the exact same colour I did you can achieve that too. I also tested it out on a paper towel, but I didn't read too much into this because it looked kind of red to me, but how it looked on a paper towel is not how it turned out, so I don't know if that helps anyone, but I don't think what shows on the paper towel is actually how it comes out. So just dumping the wig in at this point, what I did differently this time is I turned up the heat by one. So I believe I had it on like five when I was first doing it, so I put it on six this time. In order for this to work, the heat has to be really high. So at first I was worried because I was like, this is synthetic. Like if I boil it on a crazy heat, I might not have hair left. So I was scared at first, but on the back of the RIT dye bottle, it says to do this in 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And my thermometer is broken. So I just put it on six and hope for the best. Here is where I'm going to explain like the colour theory. So, this paper towel is just orange and water, no black added. So this is what it looks like when black is added. The first one is one capful of black, the second is two capfuls of black, and the third is five capfuls of black. And what I did was I stopped at five capfuls of black, but you can add more or you can add less depending on what colour you're trying to go for. So this round I left it in for 30 minutes because that's what the actual directions say to do. So that is it out of the pot. 
you want to like wash it and wash in quotation marks because you're not really washing it this acts as like a conditioner so you just rinse it out in cold water and you want to rinse it till the water runs clear i didn't do that um I, I got close to it but i'm impatient so i left and i also realized like this shit was tangled so i had to like step aside put it on my wig head my mannequin head and detangle it so i i poured just like a little bit of fabric softener but in my case or if you get it tangled you need a lot so what i did is i poured some in a spray bottle mixed it with some water and spritzed it everywhere and that helped with the detangling so we're back with the detangled wig no more rat's nest if you do this detangling process make sure to rinse out the fabric softener with cold water because it can leave like a tacky feel and it doesn't feel too great So this is the colour that it looks like when it's wet. It kind of actually looks like the colour test I did on the paper towel. But then the next day, it's giving me like Merida from Brave. It is crazy vibrant and I'm assuming it's the sun because I have my blinds open. But whoa, this is like a lot. So it's going to have to be like a festival wig, a summertime wig. I don't know, but it's a lot. However... When my blinds are closed and it's like natural lighting indoors, it doesn't look like that. It looks way toned down. Here I'm just going to quickly show how it straightens. I have my heat on 280, but I believe the max temp you can go with this wig is 300, but I just didn't want to chance it, so I did 280, and 280 works just fine. And that is the whole wig done. It's not looking like too synthetic, like to me it don't. But anyways, to make the closure section like flat, in my spray bottle I have fabric softener and some water. So I just spritzed it on the top part of it and used my hot comb on the lowest setting. The lowest setting possible because hot combs get really, really hot. So I have it on the lowest setting and I'm just pressing it down so the wig isn't bulky at the top. And that is it that's what it looks like in the sun i usually take my wigs out in the sun because the sun is just sunning it's really bright out there and you can really see like the hair in 4k so that's why i'm always out there but this is the closure as you can see the vaseline did not do anything the closure is finished the closure is orange however though i will say like the pink closure we had in the beginning versus like this orange like the orange matches better but I will put some makeup on there so it blends better. This is the colour indoors and I absolutely love it, like love it. That is it for this video, if you liked it, like it, <laughs> comment and subscribe, thanks for watching.